What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Foxtrot Talks. Now, with new and improved lighting. Our first story comes from Papua New Guinea, where there's a tribe with an interesting little funeral rite. So this particular tribe has an interesting little tradition where they like to eat the brains and nervous system of tribe members who have passed away. So this is all fine and dandy, except for when they ran into the problem of a little disease called Kuru, or as we like to call it, Kruzfeld Jakob disease. So Kruzfeld Jakob disease is a neurodegenerative disease caused by little proteins called prions, which are misfolded and have a nasty habit of misfolding other normal proteins in the brain. Unfortunately, the disease is incurable and invariably fatal. So if you get it, like that's that's pretty much it for you. So you might remember a few years ago where we had the mad cow disease outbreak, which was caused from cattle eating the remains of other cattle's brains that had this disease, thereby passing it on to new cows. So you might kind of see where I'm going with this. So the same thing is happening with this tribe. They eat the brains and the nervous system of those deceased, which have the prions in them, thereby passing the disease on to whoever consumes them. So this caused a bit of a problem in the tribe, as you can probably imagine, where at the peak of the disease, it was killing about 2% of the tribe's population per year. So there is a bright side to this story, where researchers have noticed that the tribe has a bit of a genetic resistance to Kuru. So this is super cool, because it's a great example of natural selection at work. Basically, what happened was that the people who did not have this genetic mutation that protected them from Kuru would die and would not be able to have children, thereby not being able to pass on the genes that made them susceptible to Kuru, whereas the people who did have the genetic uh, variation that protected them from disease would be able to have offspring and would pass that trait on to their children, thereby making their children immune, who would then go on to have more children to make them immune as well. So I super love science, so when I see an example of something like this in the real world, I get really interested and I just have to tell you guys about it. But that's enough about that disease, let's move on to another super fun disease that we all know and love, herpes. So herpes is the virus that's best known for its role in causing cold sores, mononucleosis, shingles, and chicken pox. And on top of that, it's a bit of a bum of a virus, as it has a long latent period where it just likes to hang out and wait for the host to be stressed or maybe susceptible to come from a disease, just so that it can make things that much worse for you. However, researchers were interested in if there were any benefits to having the herpes virus in your system. So what they did was they took some mice, they infected them with the herpes virus, waited for the virus to get into its latent or lazy stage, or just kind of hangs around the system, and then they infected it with some bacteria, and surprise, surprise, they found that the mice that had the herpes virus in their system had a more resistance to the bacteria. So there you go. So I know what you're thinking. Just because it happens in mice, it doesn't mean it's going to work in people. But, they tested people who had a cytomegalovirus, which is a form of herpes virus, and there was resistance to inf the influenza virus. And they found there was a slight increase in the resistance for those who have a cytomegalovirus. So that's another check mark for herpes. And if you already weren't convinced enough that herpes might not be all bad, researchers are looking into using the virus to target cancer cells. Now, the reason they're looking into this sort of thing is because viruses have super specific cells that they can infect in the human body. It's not only just any old virus going to infect any old cell, the receptors need to be able to match on the host and on the virus. So because of this, they've been looking into ways of using viruses to target cancer cells specifically. And cool enough, in clinical results, they found that people using this virus therapy to treat their cancer cells have had 20, have lived 20 months longer than those who have used other therapies. So I think it's looking pretty promising. So that's enough science stories for the day. Let's move on to the kid in Massachusetts who called the police on his father for running a red light. The story goes that the child was in the car with his father as they were going to get a car wash for their mom's new truck. But on the way there, the kid saw his dad run a red light, so he did what any good Samaritan should do, picked up the phone and called the police. Now I'm assuming the father didn't just run a straight red light. It's probably one of those situations where the light is yellow and you don't really want to wait through the red, so you kind of go through and you catch the tail end of it. But, I mean, maybe the kid didn't notice that. So, the kid had a nice little conversation with the police before handing the phone over to his father, who had a nice little conversation with the police explaining that what he did was wrong. So, no charges were pressed in this case, but I think we need to give kudos to this kid. He's doing a good job being able to recognize the rules of the road and when they're broken at such a young age. Good for you, kid. You know what? Good on their parents for raising such a good little guy. 
Okay guys, that's it for this episode. Let me know down below what you think about the stories you heard today. Should we all be eating brains to try and get a resistance to Kuru? Is that kid a hero? And how do you feel about the herpes virus after all I told you now? If you really liked the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next one.